today is the day that the underside of the SR2 uh, gets its red coloring. Um, a lot of you guys are going to be wondering why are you going to paint it red? Well, that's what we uh, discovered. The underside was painted, it was painted red, and that was one of Harley Earl's uh, kind of signature trademarks is he liked red wheel wells. So um, it's going to get red wheel wells, red floor pans, black engine compartment. So if you follow me underneath, then um, I can kind of show you some of the uh, fiberglass repair that we did uh, to the body. Um, this thing was handmade, and so a lot of the fiberglass uh, work was not up to probably today's standards and is not cosmetically all that great, um, but we wanted to fix a lot of the stuff that was obviously not, uh, not done uh, by General Motors and additional holes and things of that nature. So uh, let's take a look underneath. You can see how we cleaned everything up and uh, patched everything and uh, glued some of the panels back together in preparation to uh, make it all red. Okay, so you can see the body is completely and totally masked off as much as we possibly could because we don't want to uh, have any overspray onto the body. Um, inside the uh, wheel wells, uh, you can tell that there was a lot of stuff that uh, was just kind of hand laid in there. And um, over the years of racing, um, there was a lot of holes that we, uh, we filled. So um, in typical <clears throat> General Motors black engine blackout fashion, we're going to basically stop the uh, red right at those front body mounts, carry it up into the transmission tunnel, and then have the black engine uh, chassis paint come down and fog into that tranny tunnel. So after hours and hours and hours of work scrubbing and stripping and fixing the underside, this is what the original 1956 fiberglass looks like. And you can still see kind of signs where some burns were, but uh, we glassed in as many of the holes as we could and repaired as much of that really ugly stuff as possible. Um, to also try to duplicate <clears throat> some of the original um, installations, we're keeping all of the um, seat mounts, seat belt mounts, and then any additional seat mounts or um, uh, racing seat belts, we're going to actually just fabricate some, some mounting plates that look very similar to those and rivet them to the floor. So the uh, spare tire well was in really, really rough shape. This seam, we rebonded this seam with some bonding and <clears throat> carried it all the way up. Um, there you can kind of see some of that hand laid glass that's in there. But anyway, we tried to fix as much stuff as we could um, and make it as authentic uh, in appearance as, as possible. We are going to spray some undercoating in the wheel wells to try and smooth some of that out, um, but the underside of the fiberglass should appear to be, there's some of that red that was left over on that heat shield. So there you have it. Next thing you're going to see is uh, we're going to be uh, shooting in some of the undercoating into the fender wells and um, then we will spray the primer on the inside here and the primer is actually going to be a beige color so it will it'll appear as if it is original style fiberglass well we finished the uh, spray in the uh, beige colored primer on all the fiberglass looks really really good but one thing I wanted to show everybody was hopefully it shows up in this uh, all of that uh, is extremely porous fiberglass and everybody wonders why you paint a Corvette and it eventually has the uh, chance of bubbling well. That's the reason. It's another good shot of it. It's gotten a lot better over the years, but that's why fiberglass paint bubbles. 
makes a big difference in how this vehicle looks now that it's all one color and approximately the same shade as the fiberglass itself. Plus, we uh, added in a little bit of texture in the wheel wells to try to help kind of soften some of that resin and everything else. So, next step after this will be red. Thank you.